for tonight, we are headed down to Argentina uh, to interview um, our tonight's guest, film composer Mariano Sol Solino. He is the first film composer I have interviewed. I have never interviewed a, a film composer before, so I'm very excited about that. But tonight we'll be talking about the process. I mean, film composing is, as you all know, you know, make a score of a film. Um, a, a, a good film score can make or break a movie. I mean, if you got a good score, it can take even the worst movie and make it watchable. Uh, or sometimes, if it's the wrong music, it can really hurt a film. So we'll talk to uh, Mariano about the process of composing a film. Um, looking forward to this very much. And our guest is here. So let's put our hands together and welcome in Mariano. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we are live. Here we are, finally. How are you doing, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. How are, how are you? Oh, good. Good. I'm ex very excited for two, on two fronts. Uh, one, uh, because I've never interviewed a film composer before. And I am a huge composing fan. I am I'm a huge film composing fan. Uh, okay. Music, music and film is critical to me. It's part of the experience. If if I mean you want to see Absolutely. good acting, I mean you want to yeah. see good acting. You want to see um, you want to see action. You want to see good drama. But the soul of the movie, the, what makes the movie really work, is the music in the movie itself. Yeah, I, I think it's a kind of guide, a subliminal guide to the audience, you know, because, uh, you know, we composers, we are supposed to support the story. That's our main goal. So um, I, I don't believe the music should be, you know, like starring the movie. I, I, I don't believe in that. I, I think we are writing music to serve the story. And if we can do that, you know, man, you got it. <laughs> That's the main goal. Um, there is something to be said, though, about a, uh, you know, like, like the first three notes of a movie will come out. You know, like the, the first three notes of Jaws or the first three notes of the action. Yeah, movie. yeah. I mean, as soon as you hear that, I mean, you instantly are right there in that movie. Um, to me, like uh, the first three notes of a uh, a dark song or the first three yeah. notes you know it, it just as soon as you hear that you're you know what you you know what to expect absolutely um, but you're right it doesn't have to overpower it you know it doesn't have to come up there and and say yeah. look at me because i'm the most important part yeah it's tricky because lately most of the reactors uh, they, they they want us to be just supporting not not so upfront with a melody or with a theme um, I, I don't like that so much, but you know, mm -hmm. right. uh, that's what's going on now. Uh, that kind of background driven scores, but I really, really love a uh, good melody, you know, because that's the main spirit of music melody. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, to me, you know, um, you're right, Larry. The, the uh, music takes you straight into the movie. And to me, when you come out in the beginning of a film, when you come out the beginning of the film and you first and you first hear your score coming through, you know, not only yeah. is it set into the movie, but it allows the audience time to settle in and to see who's, you know, see the movie, see who's in it. You know, there's a little bit of time for the rolling, for the opening credits to come through. And, you know, you're getting comfortable, you're, you're getting anticipated. I personally don't like a movie where where I'm already I'm, I'm expected to hit the run, ground running, you know. Like, you know, the movie comes on and there's big crash boom thing, and you see a car yeah, rolling yeah, across yeah. The, rolling across the screen. You know, it's like, you know, it's like it's just so it's just so fast. It's yeah. like it's, it's okay to breathe for for a minute or two, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fast and Furious stuff. <laughs> Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. I mean, but on, on the other play. hand, yeah. But on the other hand, you you have, for example, the Marvel uh, movies, which I really like that kind of score. Maybe it's way too epic, but it's uh, the melody and the spirit. It's really uh, driven uh, the story, and that's 
may, maybe uh, maybe to it's something to humongous as an example, but you know because that those kind of big melodies, big motifs, but uh, it's maybe our contemporary John Williams stuff can kind of say. Um, I don't know. It, it it's something very very uh, interesting to debate because um, most directors, uh, as I told you, they they want to ask composers to help to tell the story, and the music is something that, in a way, makes you think less. <laughs> it sounds it, it it doesn't sound so good, but. It's something like that because you don't have to think so much about what's going on. You just feel it because the music right. is, you know, showing you the way without thinking so much. So, uh, you know, this is sadness. For example, can you hear this? Yeah. You have no doubt. It's right. You are introspective. You are maybe a bit sad. Maybe also you don't you don't have a clue of what's going on. That's just the chord, minor chord. It's telling you everything. Yeah, it does, isn't it? You know, yeah. you're right. I mean, it tells it could set you right into the story right away. Um, that, Absolutely, you know, you're right. And Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's, and there's nothing wrong to me. It's like, uh, um, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. I mean, directors that want to come out and instantly start blazing away, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, especially it seems like more now because a lot of the feature films seem to be getting a little bit longer and longer. So it's not like yeah. directors have like, you know, for the, especially, especially the big budget movies, it's not like they have, you know, 90 minutes to get their get their point across. A lot of them now are well over, you know, two hours or more. So yeah. they have the time to tell their story properly. And it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting a good score in place to help drive that movie in. It's it's perfectly yeah. fine. We we rather, we actually prefer it that way. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's like solving a puzzle, you know. Writing score is like solving a puzzle because... <laughs> Uh, you, you you have to um, to go underneath with with what you are writing, and you you must you know feel the motion just with a few notes. Um, it's kind of seen very very minimalistic at the same time, to my point of view, because sometimes you don't have so much time to 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 tell something with music. So um, I learned that doing, doing commercials, for example, because you have maybe 20 seconds to tell the story, 30 seconds. And you have to, you know, you have your intro, your building, your climax, just maybe in 30 seconds. So in, in a feature film, you have way more time to do it. So it, that's great. Um. Before we come back to that, before we get into the to the teeth of that, because there's so yeah. many questions, but I want to go back. I want to, uh, you know, we 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 sort of we sort of jumped into this and started running in, right away without putting our own theme music into place, and that is uh, oh, we got to okay. find out a little bit about your own background. Um, uh, uh, that's not so important. <laughs> I, I love chatting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's just sort of funny. It's like here we are, we're you know, sure our, our chats in there going like, holy shit, they're already running. It's like, well, don't worry, we're we're gonna build it up. We're gonna build it up here. Uh, okay. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about your early your early uh, uh, career. You know, your yeah. your when you're you're during your childhood. Um, where where were you born and raised at? Uh, I was born and raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I have also relatives in the U.S., so I'm a kind of mixture of both uh, cultures. Uh, I have relatives in New Mexico, in San Luis, Missouri, and New York. So uh, 
I, I grew up, uh, you know, with a bit of my origins and all this kind of international view too. Yeah, that was one thing I I, I, was, I mentioned, I was gonna mention to the chat was, you know, not only you, were you, are you my first film composer, but you're also, this is the first time I've ever interviewed anybody from Argentina. And <laughs> um, it's really cool because um, that's one thing I've discovered doing this interview series is like, I've only done like a little, like 70 of these. And I've already talked to people from like 15 to 16 countries. Wow. So yeah, I really, I really like that. I really like seeing how, how the world looks at things through a different pair of eyes, you know? And um, so I was really excited when you mentioned that, that you were based in Argentina. I was like, that is so cool. Um, I just got a brief glimpse. Uh, I've only had a brief exposure to Argentinian film, um, you know, as far as that goes. Like, you know, there's, unfortunately, there's like, there's no way that TV shows or films make their way up here to the States. Uh, we don't see a lot of that up here. I wish we did, but we don't. Um, so, so you grew up in Buenos Aires. Uh, yeah. What, what what was it like growing up in Buenos Aires? Um, you know, Buenos Aires, it's a city maybe in Latin America, which is the most European city because uh, most of us, we, we, we came from Europe. I'm Italian. I'm Argentinian and Italian citizen too. Uh, my grand grandfather came came from Italy, so we we have a lot of Spain, Italy, and also Israel here. There's a lot of immigrants from Russia, from from uh, Spain and Italy, mainly. Um, so it's really really a mixture of many many cultures, plus our own culture from here. Um, from nat native from Argentina, what we call the folklore, which is kind of traditional music in Argentina. And also you got the tango, which is a mixture of African rhythm plus European, uh, you know, um, harmony and melodies. So um, this in the, maybe the 1950s was really, really very, very, um uh a country with a lot of future you know it was there were many expect expectations on on argentina at that time uh we were uh, providing uh food to all the world it was very very uh a, a moment where the country was really growing a lot and we uh have people from all over the world here making new business and growing. And in the 60s, where I was born, uh, all that stuff w was really, really um, going on. And, you know, you, you have everything. You have, for example, uh, parties where, uh, where bands playing uh, music from Italy, from Spain, and tango at the same time, everybody dancing that in, the, in, in uh, public parties. So uh, I grew up with that, plus all the American and English music. Uh, so I, I consider myself a mixture, a blend of all that uh, culture. Also, I really love um, the folklore, Argentinian folklore, which is something uh, that is a mixture of, um, how can I explain this to you? Um, is uh, native rhythms uh, and some um, and melodies from the Andes, which is the mountains here, like the ones you you have in California, that kind of uh, hey, Andes, geography. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's really interesting. Uh, one mus a musician from here, from Argentina, Gustavo Santolaya, who won two Oscars uh, for Bra uh, The Secret in Their Eyes and Brokeback Mountain. Uh, he's really, really great uh, example of 
uh, you know, film composer that mixes native rhythms plus these harmonies from Europe and he really gets a really, really nice blend. He's very talented. So you, you were exposed quite early to this. I mean, you know, growing up there, it must have been a, during the, during the uh, 60s. I mean, it must have been a really exciting time. Now, were your, yeah. were your parents into, you know, were, now you're, now, were both your parents also Italian or was? Yeah. Were, were, okay. Yeah. Okay. Both. Yeah. I, I know after the yeah. war, I know after the war, a lot of uh, folks, you know, you know, a lot of, you know, you had to leave some of the, some of the countries because they were so devastated by the war. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, Argentina was a kind of paradise here because many immigrants came here looking for a future, and I think they really found it and they really set all, you know, the base here in Argentina for what we have now. They were people that they really sacrificed the, their selves uh, for for a better future. Uh, very inspiring to to many generations here, and um, you know I, I I grew up, you know, well, well, with all those traditions. Uh, now I I feel like a city, the son of the world, you know, because I work in, in the U.S., also in Europe. I have family in Europe too, so you really uh, feel this global, you know, feeling about doing projects here and there and, and everywhere. 